Based on some feedback, we've updated the magic band reader. It can do different things for different magic bands. Some people have been saying they're having trouble getting the RFID readers. I put a link in the description below to the manufacturer that you can buy on their website if Amazon sold out. Before attempting the install, I highly recommend reading the Raspberry install guide, which I'll link below. Let's go over some of the new features in the code. Down here, you can uh, set this to true. And it'll print out the magic band ID every time you scan it. Uh, when you start it, the program, it'll be false. So you gotta set it to true by hand. The next thing is the reverse circle. Originally it was going counterclockwise. If you set this to true, it will go clockwise like the real magic bands. This next section is the sequence definitions. And here you can have magic band IDs that play specific colors and sounds or you can have randomized ones. So here I'm gonna change this magic band to the word any followed by the number three. If you have the word any followed by any number, if it doesn't have a magic band, it will play one of those uh, sequences at random. Each block has the color you want for the ring, the color you want for the mouse when, the, when it lights up at the end, a spin sound if you want it while it's spinning, the hold time for the hold at the end, how long to hold the color, and then finally the sound to play after the spin. If you don't want a spin sound, just leave a blank like I did here. Then if you have a magic band that you want to play specific colors, just go ahead and put the ID in there and then change the settings. If you want to add a new magic band, just cop the block, change the ID to the new magic band ID, and change the settings you want. But just be careful that you always maintain this comma. Each block needs a comma after it. If you have the print magic band set to true, this is what it looks like when you scan it, and this is the ID that you use in the sequence definitions. In the previous video, there was some confusion on my part about how the install works with the tar file when it's really a zip file, so I'm going to run through it again real quick. This writing of the image to the SD card is the same as before. After we write the image, we're going to do the sync command just to remount the drive. And then I'll, most of this is the same as the previous video. Create that SSH file and then do the uh, wireless Ethernet settings. I already had the file created. I'm just going to copy it over. If you need help, just look at the other video for that. But here's where we're going to differ from the uh, previous video because people had trouble with SCP in that file over that you get from GitHub. I'm just going to copy it from my local computer to the SD card and then I'll show you how to use it in a minute. This saves you from having to copy it over with the network. I'm just going to copy it right to the SD card. And also look it's a zip file now. In the previous video it was a tar. Uh, but if you download it from GitHub it's going to be zip.
SSH to the Pi. The default password is going to be Raspberry. And then the first thing I want to do is change the Pi password. You can make this password anything you want. And here's where the directions are going to change a little bit. Remember, we copied that file over to the, the uh, SD card. That means it's going to be in the boot directory. So I'm just going to copy that over to here. And then I'm going to unzip it. And you see it's called the dash master. But when you unzip here, yours is still going to direct, create a directory called Magic Band Reader Master. Mine's develop because I'm still working on it. But when you run it, you're going to CD here to CD Magic Band Reader dash master. And then you'll find all the files in there. And then we want to run that install program, which is going to take a little bit of time. And the install is complete. There's one more step we need to do. And that's copy everything in this directory back one to the, the home pi directory. Retrospect, I could have had the install program do this for you. Um, if there's still trouble, let me know and I can help you out with that. That's a pretty simple command. So now we're back in the home pi directory and you can see everything's in there. And this is the file you want to edit. Your home pi magic band .pi. That's the one you want to change for your sequences and setting the light counts and all that. Then the last thing we need to do is uh, edit the RC local file so that it starts up automatically. And this is the same as before. In case that's hard to see, that's a semicolon there after the home pi. Not a colon. If you want to capture the magic band IDs, you set this print ID, print band ID to true. And then run it from the command line like this. Then when you scan a magic band ID, it should print out right here. There it is. And that's the ID you update into your sequences. Once you have everything configured the way you want, just go ahead and reboot and it should start up. If you have any problems, let me know. Or if you have any suggestions, on making the install easier, uh, we can see what we can do.